Welcome. Welcome to Schrodinger's Watermelon. Today we are going to see a practical example of declarative macros. The concept of macros is sometimes referred to as metaprogramming. That's because all they do is to generate some code on compile time. You might need a macro for a couple of reasons. Maybe there is a repetitive piece of code you're writing. Or maybe the code would look much simpler and elegant if a macro was used. There are mainly two types of macros in Rust, declarative and procedural. The main focus of this video is declarative macros since they are easier to comprehend than write. Procedural macros will be the topic of another video. Declarative macros look like plain functions. The clear difference is you use an exclamation mark at the end of its name. You might have come across a couple of these as you're writing a Rust code. Print line to print to terminal, panic to unwind and terminate the program, or vec to define a vector easily are some of the declarative macros that are inside the standard library. Before we start writing our first declarative macro, there are a few things to clarify. As I stated earlier, macros are not regular functions. They are expanded on compile time to generate some code. On the other hand, regular functions are evaluated on runtime. Also, this tutorial covers a practical example. It will cover positional, infinite positional or named parameters, variants of a single declarative macro and exporting macros to use them outside their package. There are still many things you can do with declarative macros, such as using curly braces or brackets instead of regular parentheses. The aim of this tutorial video is to give you a brief and clear introduction. If you want to learn more, you need to check out the link to the documentation in the description. In this example project, we will write some macros to generate strings of markdown in compile time. We will not cover all of the markdown features. Instead of that, we will cover the features to the extent that helps us learn some useful concepts about declarative macros. We will cover headers, code blocks with and without the language specified, and the unordered list. We're going to create a brand new binary Rust project and open it up in VS Code. And then we will create a libRS file to write our macros. Before writing macros, we will write our first test to define how we will use our macro. In this test, we define the header macro takes a single parameter. The output should add a pound and a space to its beginning. Now it's time to write the header macro. Declarative macros are defined with macro roles keyword. In the body, we will add val input as a type of literal. And since we want to return a value from this macro, we need to use double curly braces. In the body, we will concatenate pound and space and the wall parameter. When we run the test, we can see header macro works as expected. Now you might ask what literal type means for macro parameters. Parameter types and macros are token types, whereas types in regular Rust are data types. Literal type here means this macro accepts a literal. This might be a string literal, integers, booleans, floating point numbers, and any other primitive data type Rust has. But you cannot pass variables, for instance, since variables are not literal. There are many token types for declarative macro parameters. I will show you only the most frequently used ones. I have explained literal before, it only allows primitive data types and not variables. If you want to support both variables and literals as parameter, you can use item. If you want to restrict it to only variables, then you can use ident. Rust Analyzer plugin in VS Code has a very nice feature to desugar the macros. When you choose to inline macro, it will desugar the macro to what's been generated. Hello macro with hello as its input will generate this code. Var parameter has been replaced with hello input. The test for code block macro is quite similar to header test. The difference is naturally on the expected output. Code block macro will have a code parameter as literal type. Here we will again concatenate three backticks and a new line. Then we will use the code parameter. And finally we will concatenate a new line and final three backticks. As you may observe, code block test runs just fine. Code blocks in Markdown might accept the language as well. If Markdown is rendered with HTML, this helps to highlight the code. Of course, we can't have the same effect on Terminal, but what if we wanted to have the same result? Our code block macro must accept a name parameter called lang and generate Markdown code with the language specified. In the code block test with language, we will pass an extra lang parameter to code block macro. And in the output, we will check if the lang parameter is appended at the end of initial three ticks. We will write a second variant of code block macro. Like code parameter, we will have another parameter named lang. This is how named parameter look for a macro. The ones who use this macro will start with lang and an equal sign. Then they will provide an input. In the body, we will concatenate three backticks first, then the value of lang parameter, then a new line, 
then the code, and finding a new line and three ticks. And the test runs successfully. Sometimes we want our macros to have possibly infinite parameters. An unordered list in Markdown fits this case quite well. It can have as many parameters as we want. In unordered list macro test, we will call your list macro with two values, foo and bar. And we will check if the output is each value separated by a new line and prepended dashes with surrounding spaces. In your list macro, we will first define a parameter with multiple inputs. To define parameter with multiple inputs, we start with a dollar sign followed by parenthesis, separator and repetition operator. Technically, we might pick any kind of separator, but comma is mostly convenient, so we will keep it. Also, there are many types of repetition operators. Since we strictly require at least one parameter or more, we need the plus operator. Inside the parenthesis, we have to define the name and type of our parameter. Inside the body of this variant of your list macro, we will use concat macro to concatenate the values we get. However, we need to unpack the parameters first. Inside concat macro, we will iterate over each given parameter by using dollar sign, parenthesis, and plus. Inside parenthesis, we will prepend each while parameter with a dash surrounded by spaces. Then we will use the while itself. And we will finalize it with a new line. We also need to use trim end method of string slice because it will have an extra new line at the very end. And test for your list macro performs as anticipated. Let's use our new macros in main method. We'll create an array for each invocation. When we use header macro, we will realize that we can't really import it here. That is because main RS file is technically not included in the package. If we want our macros public to the outside of crate, we need to export them first. We can export the macro by using macro export header on each of our macro. After exporting our macros, we can finally import them in the main RS file. We will use each macro with some sample values. And then we will join them together to a string separated with double new lines. At the end, we will print out the content variable. And here we see the output of each macro in action. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you found this video useful. If you want to go beyond practical, check the links to the documentation in the description. If you want more of these videos, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. I will see you in the next video.